All right, Tito. Um, so just to uh, just to start off, uh, kind of uh, tell us where you're where you're from. All right. Well, I was born in Colombia, in Bogota to be specific, the capital. Uh, I moved here when I was like six or seven, so I've been here for quite a while. I consider myself culturally American mm -hmm. rather than Colombian. <laughs> um, yeah, that's where I'm from. Um, what when you got here? Um, what was that? Uh, do you have like memories of Colombia? Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, we go back like every other year, so it's not something that I forget. It's definitely part of me, but but I remember. Do uh, do you remember at all what it was like transitioning from Colombia to America? Oh yeah, definitely. When I came to the U.S., I only knew two words, which were rock and juice. <laughs> And my parents expected me to go to a to a school knowing only two words, and those were by far probably the most difficult times of my life. <laughs> trying to get by <laughs> Just in a foreign rock country. and juice. Yeah, rock and juice. <laughs> wow. Well, then, how did you end up learning the rest of the uh, dictionary? Well, here's the thing. By the time I was in school, obviously, like there was hardly any people that I could communicate with, mm -hmm. except for like uh, the Cuban immigrants that also lived in Florida. Oh yeah, by the way, I moved to Florida instead of coming straight here. Um, and so, we, like my parents and the and my Cuban like uh, schoolmates formed like a, a group, wherein we could learn uh, English in more of a uh, more of like a. An isolated setting rather than having to do it with peers from America because mm -hmm. that was very stressful for us as children. Right. So they hired a, uh, a teacher and uh, me and these like 10 other kids would get together I think it was every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday to, to learn English. Did you, was that, how long did you have to do that then? Were you still in regular school at the yes, same time? Yes, I was still in regular school but because I didn't know the language, they had special classes for us that, was, that were taught in Spanish and English. Okay. How long did it take you to end up learning beyond rock and juice? <laughs> well, beyond the rock and juice, obviously, it took me like a day or two to learn the <laughs> words. But to learn, like, sentence structure, grammar, and all that, it didn't, it didn't take me as long as I would have expected nowadays. Like, it took me approximately, like, two months-ish to get, like, the hang of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And I mean, besides, you were already like six, so most of the other kids probably didn't know exactly. much about that anyway. Exactly. Um, so, uh, so once you learned uh, some more words, uh, uh, what? Um, and we're talking in school. What? What were those schools like? What schools did you go to? A lot. My parents and I moved around quite a lot. In Colombia, I went to the school called the English. The English? The English, El Inglés, right? And um, ironically enough, they didn't teach you English there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's where I went to first. Then in Florida, I went to um, a charter school, which with its name I cannot remember, and a, um, in Beachland, Beachland I think it was called, yeah. Then after that, I moved to Colorado, and... Uh, I went to Hygiene mm -hmm. for like a year, then I went to Westview, and then I went here. To Silver Creek. Silver Creek yeah. um, uh, your time here at Silver Creek, what has been, um, what was your most pivotal moment here at Silver Creek? Okay, um, most pivotal moment. Failing ninth grade English. <laughs> really? Oh, no, no, yeah. Cause, I mean, it's the easiest class. Just right class. back to where it's you started. It's <laughs> the easiest class, but I was just messing around the entire time. And that really taught me to, like, get in gear and, and just start focusing on school. Because that was just the most embarrassing moment of my life when I told my mom I failed ninth grade English. <laughs> you got an F. I got an F. Like, I not to, like... I had to retake it. <laughs> it was bad. Well, why, why was it such a struggle? Like, why was it... Well, because... You... I came here, like, and there was so much more freedom that I had before when I was in middle school. So At Westview? Yeah, exactly. So, so it was just like, I can do whatever I want. And, <laughs> and so I just spent my time doing nothing, being on my phone. And that led to my failing ninth grade English. What did you change in order to get away from being distracted so much? I 
just have to tell myself that as much as schoolwork sucks <laughs> and as boring as it is, I need to do it because it's for the good of my future. What, um, was there anything in high school that really stood out to you? Like, not like, not like a personal thing like failing ninth mm -hmm. grade English, more like, uh, more like a, a something that happened where we were all, where we all experienced it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where like we're at an assembly and something weird happens, something like that. Mm. You were in my SCLA class, right? Uh, which grade? In ninth grade. Uh, I don't. Th Ms. I, don't th I don't think so. Okay. Was it first semester? First semester, yeah. Then I, 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 yeah, it probably was, yeah. Okay. Well, um, this doesn't necessarily happen to everyone, but it happened to the class and. Really, it really marked like the rest of my high school career, at least, and I think it marked uh, Garrison's too. <laughs> but um, when I was in the first semester at CLA, we had to do, you know, have to you had to write on the boards and, and say like what your goals were, and then at the end you'd have to break them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, on the yeah. on the plank. Exactly. Yeah. So w when we did that, Garrison and I were just like starting to know each other, but he really didn't like me. He, he thought <laughs> I was like a total tool. <laughs> um, and so after we broke them, there were like three boards left. And so Miss Grillet decided to put them up, they put them all three like on there and just like asked whoever wanted to try and break them. So Garrison being who he is, he tried to go up there first, right? And it, him and I were behind the boards because we were both the ones that wanted to do it. And everyone else was in front. Mm -hmm. So he, he decided to like hit the boards as hard as he could, and from the side that everyone else was standing at, the boards didn't even move, right? Mm -hmm. But the side that we were on, there was clearly like a big crack in it, right? But everyone didn't see that, so they just, they just thought like Garrison couldn't do it. <laughs> so I went up, and I hit it, and of course it broke, because it was already like weak, way down the middle. <laughs> and that started Garrison like hating me for <laughs> at least two semesters. And then after that, I don't know what happened, we had a few more classes together, and, um, and we just became like really close friends. So now that Garrison has moved beyond the the spite he felt yeah. because of the plank uh, and and clearly breaking the board. Yeah, clearly. Um, what uh, what what do you guys do now? Like now that you guys hang out together? Well number one thing he introduced me to rock climbing, which um, oh, okay. yeah which for for our friend group is like the number one thing and we go there like every other day. Who who specifically? Oh, uh, who specifically? Yeah. Uh, let's see, Garrison, Austin, Tim, Sage, Maya. Sage and Maya. Zach. Yeah. Climb wall. That's cool. Or yeah. rock climb. <laughs> climb wall. That's Zach Heller. Oh, before Danielle left for uh, for Peru, she'd go with us. Uh, Luke Shank would go with us. So I mean, we had a pretty big size. group. Yeah, yeah. We, we even had Mr. Smedley go with us one time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was really fun. So that's like that's like the number one thing we do. What is it? Where do you guys do it usually? Uh, in Boulder, there's a gym called the Spot. But whenever it's warm out and we have the mats, we'll we'll go up to the mountains and find some places to climb. And how do you guys like organize it? What's that like? Do you guys just like decide and yeah, all we just meet decide. up there? Yeah, exactly. What do you guys? What's I mean? I've never rock climbed before. Mm -hmm. So what what do you? Ju ju I mean, just talk about rock climbing because I have like I I mean I, I have a couple stories that my dad has told me, mm -hmm. but like I don't know. All right. Well, more specifically, we boulder rather than rock climb. Okay. Which is essentially just rock climbing, but without the ropes, right? So okay. it requires just a pat on the floor and you not being too scared. <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's really it's not a team sport, but it can be right. because there's difficult and challenging problems that you need to c accomplish, and if you have somebody there helping you with it, it really like speeds up the process. So, I mean, having a group like that really is. It's not necessary, but it's definitely something you want. Right. Um, and I couldn't be more thankful for having those friends to, for us to help each other. What do you, um, do you guys do anything else besides rock climbing? I mean, we used to, yeah, definitely. We tried, we tried wrestling, specifically Zach and I did rugby. But really the only thing that's really stuck with me is rock climbing. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I think it's just something like... First of all, I'm really bad at team sports. I don't know why I just cannot play in a team sport. But any solo sport that I can do with my friends is like the number one thing. For example, with wrestling, that was that was so much fun, but everyone else hated it, so mm -hmm. we didn't stick with it. I don't know why rock climbing stuck. I really don't, but I'm I'm glad it did because it's really fun. Um, 
you, you said that you did wrestling, yeah. uh, but you only did it for like... For uh, one season. For one season? Yeah. W what didn't you like about it? Oh, I loved it. I oh, loved, loved every it? aspect of it, yeah. I, I just really hated doing it alone. <laughs> so it wasn't even worth it. Like, it. It was fun, but it was definitely not worth doing it by myself. So, um, after high school, what, what do you plan on doing? Um, well, I was, um, I've been talking to a Navy recruiter. Okay. And um, I got a high enough score on my ASVAB, uh, 90 out of 99, which is really good. Yeah. And um, he's encouraging me to join the, uh, the nuclear tech program. Like McGee? Like McGee. That's exactly. awesome. Yeah, exactly like McGee. And um, that would either require me being in a nuclear submarine or, a, or an aircraft carrier, depending on what, I'm, what I want to do. But as of right now, nothing's set in stone, and I uh, still have yet to decide. Do you think you want to do it, though? I'm thinking about it, yeah. Like you're leaning towards it? Leaning towards it. So, um, not in high school, but more broad, like mm -hmm. in, in your entire lifespan, what has been, what was one, what is one thing that really stands out? Like, what, what's something that happened to you that, like, you'll always remember? Okay. I don't know how old I was, but I don't even remember where it was. But I had a bike when I was a really, like, a really little kid. Mm -hmm. And I could not ride it without training wheels, as most people couldn't, right? And so I was learning how to ride it without training wheels. And so I remember one day, my dad and I were out, and I was trying, I was trying, I was trying, and I could not get it, right? <laughs> okay, anyway. And um, so we, we go back inside, and I was crushed. I, I felt so bad, and I just really wanted to get it. So I told my dad if we could go outside and try it one more time. And he was like, you're not going to get it right now. We just tried it. <laughs> but I kept insisting, and I kept begging him, and I, uh, like, finally he relented, and he decided, all right, fine, we'll go out and try it just once. So we go out, and I was just like completely in the zone. I just focused. And that, that time where he had no faith in me, I was able to ride my bike without any training wheels. And from that moment on, I just realized that like I can't really like trust other people's decisions with me. I have to really go out and do it myself. Um, <clears throat> so I know, I know, I know. Before when we had talked about this, you didn't want me to ask this question, but I, I, I feel like you would provide something unique, just because you went to Westview and I went to Altona, mm -hmm. and so far you're the only person I've interviewed who went to Westview. Mm -hmm. So, what was it like transitioning from Westview and having such a bitter rivalry with us at Altona, and then having to combine? All right, here's the thing. I never had any rivalry with, Al with Altona, because I wasn't really into playing any sports or anything like that when I was in middle school. Right. So, the extent of my uh, exposure to you people from Altona was more <laughs> of like a... Oh, I guess you guys exist. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even realize Altona existed until, like, seventh grade. So <laughs> that's different. Um, but as to what it was like coming here, it was definitely a lot better. Because I really did not like the people that went to Westview, and that, by extension, went to Longmont. So coming here was a, was a nice shift in, in the people that I met. And I'll, I'll, I'll honestly say that you guys were... A lot nicer and a lot more accepting than most people. Altona kids? Yeah. Heck yeah. Sure. Definitely. Um, what about overall, just like transitioning from middle school to high school? Like I said, I failed freshman year. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't easy. So, okay, so so it was pretty rough overall? I wouldn't say it was rough overall. It was definitely rough on my academic side because I just did not care. Well, what about like the social aspect? Social aspect was perfect. I mean, it was really fun meeting new people and that's always what I like, so... Do you guys have, what, what do you, um, do you have any, like, uh, anything, a, any story uh, of you and your friends that you guys retell all the time? I mean, I'm sure, but a lot of those things wouldn't be okay with saying on the camera. Okay, so here's what I've told people in terms of that. Um, I really want people to share whatever story. I don't want them to feel restricted. Mm -hmm. um, so since I want people to try and uh, tell these stories... Um, I want to encourage you to try and try and tell it. And if it's anything too bad, we, we can we can stop. Okay, gotcha. So, um, this is a story that's between my friend and I, who, for this sake, will be called Jerry. Okay. So Jerry and I were really happy, so to speak. Um, and we, we went to Estes at six in the morning. And by that, I mean we got 
two Estes at six in the morning. <laughs> so you woke up like four or five o'clock yeah, in the morning. Yeah, exactly. And we planned to go rock climbing at, at Estes because, you know, it's in the mountains. There's some really good spots. But anyway, we were really happy. <laughs> so, so we got lost <laughs> in, Estes, in the mountains you got lost at in six in the morning. <laughs> And it took us five hours <laughs> to simply find the town of Estes. By that time, we were really happy. <laughs> and we could not figure out where we, parked, where we parked the car from the town of Estes. So we spent the next three hours looking for our, looking for our car, but every, every once in a while we forgot we were looking for our car and we would just go down the streets of Estes and just looking at the shops. And we said so many stupid things <laughs> that every single time we hang out, we have to like quote something from that trip. <laughs> by far that has been the stupidest moment of my life, but by far the funniest moment So you got lost in the mountains or you got lost in the city? In both. Of in both? In both. So then how did you get out of the mountains and back to the city? Well, because we, we, were, we, were just, we were lost. We had no idea where we were going. So you just wandered through the forest? We, yeah, we wandered, and then we found the town of Estes, and it was just, it was a blast. Where was the car? It, it, was, it was in the city of Estes. We parked there, walked to the mountains, but we didn't know where we parked it because we were really happy. How, <laughs> how far away did you walk from the car? Like, how far was the, was the trailhead from, from the it car? It was off. It, it wasn't, I mean, it was like... I couldn't tell you, but it, it was <laughs> far remember. enough that, that we definitely could not remember where we were. <laughs> so it, was, it wasn't so far that it was like ridiculously, yeah. like just, but it was long enough that you probably should have kept track of yeah. before you yeah, walked exactly. into the Jerry forest. and I should have definitely kept track. <laughs> okay, so to close out, um, <laughs> from all the, these stories uh, that you've been so willing to share, mm -hmm. What what what's a lesson that you've learned uh, that you can uh, that you can share with uh, with with everyone watching here? Well, something I definitely like to have told me when I was younger, like when I just turned to ninth grade, is don't be an idiot. <laughs> Focus. And Focus and just. Although, like, experiences here are going to be very fun, you have, to, you have to kind of, like, gauge yourself and what you're going to do, because you can definitely take things too far. And, um, but just because you take things too far does not necessarily mean you're making a mistake. <laughs> just be careful. That's the extent of, of what I've learned in high school is be cautious, but don't be overly cautious that you miss out on life. All right. Thank you, Tito. Yep. I got you, fam.